Welcome to the No Fear Sock Knitting class. My name is Denise, also known as Earth Tones Girl, and in today's class we are going to be covering part three in my color changing series, and we are going to be concentrating on changing color when knitting a short row heel. Here is my sample. So if you've been watching all along, um, part one of this class was how to change color um, when you're knitting, for example, a scrappy sock and how to avoid getting the jog in your color, in your sock as you're changing colors. Part two was how to change color when knitting a heel flap and gusset. So today's class, again, we're going to cover how to change color when knitting a short row heel. I'm really excited to bring this to you. Um, it is much more simple than it looks. It's even simpler than doing the heel flap and gusset. Um, one thing, I will not be teaching how to knit a short row heel. That is not what we're covering in this class today. This class is just strictly how to change the color so as you're knitting along, knitting along, you get to this point, you're ready to insert your heel. So I will show you how to weave in your end when you change over to your contrasting heel and then how to pick back up your regular, oh, sorry, we're going in this direction. <laughs> so you get to here. So how to change color, um, how to weave in your end when you change for the contrasting color for your heel and then how to rejoin to your working yarn within the sock once your heel is complete. Um, this heel, this technique can be applied to any short row heel that you're doing, uh, whether it's a German short row heel, um, a Japanese short row, any type of short row heel that you want to use. My go-to heel is the Fish Lips Kiss heel. I will link to that pattern for you down below. Um, it is a paid for pattern. It is a copyrighted pattern by Patty, um, Patty Joy and why am I blanking on her last name? It doesn't matter for the sake of this class, but um, she is the socks therapist. And again, her pattern is the fish lips kiss heel. She does have tutorials if you are interested on how to work um, the stitches within her pattern. But again, I'm not teaching that in this class. This is just focusing on how to change color um, when you're starting the heel and then how to rejoin with the main color for your sock. So uh, let's get started, you guys. I have my sample here. This is what we're going to be learning and I can't wait to show you. Let's get started. Okay, here we go. Now when you're working a short row heel, what you're basically doing is creating a little pocket where your heel is going to go. And you're doing that by instead of working a complete row, you're working part of a row or a short row. And that is what, because you're not completing the row, it sort of creates a little pocket and puffs up creating the little heel portion of your heel that wasn't really clear but you know what I mean <laughs> so when you're working a short row for example in the body of a garment you're working across a much wider piece of fabric so what it does is it just gives a little bit of a lift for example the back of a sweater neck etc but when you're working a short row heel because the rows are so short it gives you this little pocket which is where your heel is going to sit the key for many people is you're knitting along. Now, again, this is a scrappy sock, so you're changing color. And I did talk about how to do that in part one of this series. I will link that down below for you. But what you want to do is create a nice clean, let me bring this a little closer to the camera, is create a nice clean join between your contrasting heel and this little intersection, this is usually where people pick up holes or have a hole, not that they pick up a hole, but have a hole when they're changing color and then rejoining the color. Because as you can see, there's not a lot of distance between where you end the heel and where you pick back up. It is a short row, so you do create the pocket, but that actual join area is very small. So this video is going to show you how to make that as clean as possible when changing to your heel color and then changing back to the color within your sock. And again, this can be applied to a scrappy sock, to a solid um, yarn. If you're using a solid yarn, um, it can be used for just about anything. So let's get started. 
I have my sample here and I am all ready to go. I have done my three um, sets of, I have three different colors here. I have five rounds of each color. So now I am ready to join in my contrasting heel. The, so what I'm going to do, and again, this can also be applied. It does not matter which knitting technique you're going to use. Whether you're using two circulars for the sake of this tutorial, I am going to be using um, two circular needles. Let me pull the camera out a little bit here for you. Uh, there we go. I am going to be using two circular needles, but you can use magic loop, double pointed needles. Um, nine inch circulars is a completely different conversation, but um, the basic method is still the same. So I am going to get myself into position here. Okay, I am ready to go. So here is my tail. I have left a tail. Um, this may be, I don't know, about six inches long, five or six inches. You don't really need it to be longer than that. And I'm going to join the same way that I did in part one and part two. So I've got my needle draped over my finger. I am going to just put my needle in under. So I've inserted my needle into the first stitch and under the tail of the old color. So now I'm just going to find, haha, the tail of the new, here it is, nope, <laughs> here it is, okay. Had, a, had to struggle there to find the, um, the end, okay. And now I'm ready to start. So I'm going to give myself, again, maybe about five or six inches, and I'm just going to make a little loop and drape that over the needle. I'll do that again, just a really simple loop. I just have it draped over my hand trying to do this one-handed. I just have it draped over my finger like this and I'm just going to put the loop over the needle and I'm going to start knitting. I'm going to go in. Now I'm going to drop my tail because I just want the working yarn. So let's get that. There we go. You can leave a good length for yourself and I'm going to start knitting. So now as you can see my yarn is coming over and then I'm going to go back under. Whoops, split my yarn. I'm going to go under and I'm going to work across. Now for a short row heel, what usually happens is, now I've gone across, what is that, five stitches? I'll just do maybe one more. And there we go. Okay, that's about enough. I usually work about four, five, anywhere from five to seven stitches across. This one, I've done, yeah, seven stitches. So now I'm going to just let this tail hang out. I'm going to tuck that in. I always tuck my ends into the sock to keep them out of my way. This end, I'm going to work when I come around at the end of the short row heel, okay? And you'll see that in just a bit. So now what I'm gonna do is work across. Now a short row heel, like I said, you're only working across one half of the stitches, the same way you would with a regular heel. And I'm going to do this in real time for you because I know many of you, whoops, let's split, separate that very carefully. I know that many of you appreciate being able to see this in real time. I think it's very helpful. So I'm going to just work across here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. And take your time Working a short row heel, I personally prefer that, prefer a short row heel to a heel flap and gusset. In, and someone asked me why, just out of curiosity, I, it personally fits my foot better. That's number one. Number two, I also think it knits faster. I'm not going to lie. I just prefer the speed of it. I prefer the look and the fit of a short row heel over a more traditional heel flap and gusset. So I've now... If you're working the pattern, you usually work until two stitches before the end of your the half of the round. You work your twin stitch in this in this particular stitch, or you work your wrap and turn, or whatever your instruction. You could do your um, I know it's a double stitch in German short rows. Um, it's a wrap and turn if you're doing a wrap and turn short row heel. I'm not sure what the terminology is for a Japanese short row. And I know for the fish lips kiss heel, it's a twinned stitch. So you will work that stitch here and you're now, then you're going to turn. You're going to turn your work and then you're going to work back across here. Now this is just going to hang out. 
Okay. I don't, I'm not interested in that right now. It's not going to get in my way. So now you're just going to continue working your short row. Again, I'm not demonstrating how to do the short row here, just how to change the color. So you are going to continue working your short row back and forth, back and forth. And when the short row is complete, I will then show you what to do to rejoin everything. So right now what we've done, let's just recap really quick. We have joined in the tail from the main color of the sock. Okay, so that is secure and that's in place. So go, we're going to continue the short row heel and then I will show you what to do next. I have started to work my short row. And as you can see, I've got a couple of rows done here, but I just wanted to come on again and emphasize that when you're working, again, it doesn't matter which technique you're using, German short row, fish lips, kiss heel, etc. The edge here, when you're on the pearl side, the edge is going to feel really sloppy. You're going to see this really long strand here and you're going to wonder what we're going to be fixing or how we're going to fix this space. I will show you that at the end, but I wanted to come on and let you know that this is normal for this edge to look like that. It could even look as, as wide open and loose as this as you're knitting along. That is absolutely normal. Okay, so I just wanted to reassure you that that would be fine. So now I've worked there. I'm going to turn again. And I'm going to just going to just continue working across on my short row heel and I will see you in a minute. So my short row heel is almost complete. I am down to my last two stitches. So I am now going to knit this entire round in real time so that you can see when you're supposed to join and how. So like I said, my short row heel is almost done. So I'm going to knit these last two stitches. And whenever you're at an intersection, okay, so whenever you're at a corner or a joining point, you always want to give the yarn a little extra tug. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm done with this needle. So now I'm going to just pull this one out and I'm going to break this yarn. That was my contrasting heel. So I'm going to put that to the side and I now have my next color in my sequence. So I'm going to turn this. And what I'm going to do now is weave in the yarn that I was using for the heel. So I'm going to get my needles into place. Like I said, I will do this entire round with you in real time so that you can see what this looks like. So same way that we've been joining all along, but now because this is, like I said, an intersection or a joining point, you definitely want, you don't want to pull the tail, which is what I've warned you against in the other two videos, but you definitely want to join, what you want to pull is the working yarn. Okay. What is now becoming the working yarn. You want to give that an, oops, you want to give that an extra tug. So let's just put that, drape that back on. Okay. So here I am and I'm ready to start knitting. So I'm going to give myself a decent tail because this is what I'm going to weave in. Right now I am weaving in the tail from the contrasting yarn for my heel and I'm going to do that the same way. When I'm ready to knit now my third stitch, I'm going to give this a little extra pull. Sorry, just getting my hands organized. I'm going to give this a little extra pull and I'm going to pull again. And what that does, did you see all the stitches tighten up? Now you don't want to pull too hard because you're going to start yanking on this. So you want to give that a little extra tug and I'm going to keep weaving over under the same way that we've been doing. Okay, I'm finished. I think that's enough to go across. I'm just going to now drop this inside just to get that tail out of the way. I'm now going to continue knitting across. And here I go. You guys, as I've said so many times in all of my tutorials, do not rush take your time. This is absolutely not a race. Okay. You may have to do this. Some of you will catch on to this right away. Some of you may not, some of you may like it. Some of you may not, and that's all okay. What you definitely want to do is just think as you go through. So now I'm almost to the end of this other, I'm almost to the end of the instep stitches, but guess what? Here's that tail. This is the beginning tail. Okay. From when I started 
the contrasting heel. This is waiting now to be woven in. Okay, here was the working yarn. Where, where did that tail go? Oh, it's right here. The working yarn was right here. So I'm going to show you when we started the contrasting heel, we wove this in. So now watch what happens here. So this was now the tail when I started with the gray. So I'm going to pull that in between the stitches. You know what? Let me do it with this hand. I'm going to pull that between the two stitches in that space, same way we've done it before in the other two videos. And I'm going to weave this in. Now I stopped two, four, six, eight. So you know what? Let me just knit across maybe two more. That's a little bit too far. Okay, you can put a marker for yourself there if you want, just to remind yourself to stop. So again, I'm just going to pull this between the needles. That's going to hang out there. Okay, I am now going to weave in that tail. Sorry, let me bring this back into focus for you all. And I'm going to weave this in. Get under, don't wanna to pull too hard. Disclaimer, as I always say, I'm a little bit clumsy when I'm looking through the camera, but you guys, whoop. Okay, so haha, -ha, you see what happened there? The stitch popped off the needle. So no worries, just pop it back on. Get your finger into place and just keep going. So I'm going to go under and over. Okay, so now I'm finished. Now watch what happens. I'm going to pull this needle out. Again, the technique doesn't matter which needle, what Two circs, magic loop, it doesn't matter. I'm going to give this a pull and tighten that up. Then I'm going to pull this th thread into place. And there we go. That whole space in there is now joined. Now, here are the other two stitches for my short row, okay, that I have to work. So I'm going to now Continue working. Now it's very important that when you work into these last two stitches on your short row, and this doesn't matter what type of short row you're knitting, you definitely, because it's another joining point and another intersection, you definitely want to give that a little extra tug. Okay, not on the first stitch, on the second. So put your needle under so you don't get your ladder, give it a little tug, close up that intersection, and you're going to now pull again just a little bit more and you're going to continue knitting. Okay, I have one more tail to weave in. Let's pause and see where we are for this for a second. So now here is my intersection. You'll be able to see it a lot better once this needle is out of the way, but there everything is smooth. I have closed that up. I can pull this tail end in if you don't mind it hanging there, you can leave it there. It really doesn't matter. Or you can find the end, which I believe is right here. Yep. Just find that and pull it through and tuck it inside. Everything just gets tucked right inside. So we're going to keep knitting across. Get that out of my way. Tuck that, it refuses to tuck in there. So we're just going to keep knitting across. La la la. Okay. Just going to keep going. I'm about halfway through. Okay, almost to the end. And again, I have to be sure, almost to the other side. Now I need to stop when I have enough stitches over here that I want to start weaving in. So I can kind of feel under my finger when I'm getting down to about that right number. So two, four, six stitches, that's perfect. Find my other tail. Whoops, yep, here it is. Okay, <laughs> there's a lot of tails going on. So now, here's my other tail. Okay, this is now from when I just joined. So let's clean this up so everything looks neat and organized here. Okay, I'm going to tuck everything in there we go. This is the working yarn. This is my last tail to weave in. Okay, we're going to now pull this through. My fingers already in place. Get everything out of the way. Here's my working yarn. I'm coming around. 
And this last tail is the beginning of this new color, okay, of continuing with my main color. I'm just going to hold this in place with my thumb. And now I'm going to continue knitting and weave that end in. Okay, go under over, same way we've been doing before. If you are watching this video first, I highly recommend that you watch the first video, okay, in the color change series part one. I'm going to pull this out of the way so that you know how to do that over under technique. So now here we go, we're going to tighten up again. Here's this yarn, so that's going to be pulled in. And here is the weaving in the tail. That's going to give that, a, I'm gonna give that a little tug. Pull just a little to even things out. And there you go. Perfect, smooth, no holes. Everything is woven in. Here's that other end. I'm gonna pull that little loop, tuck everything in, tuck, tuck, tuck. You always want to tuck those ends in. I will even go through here and make sure I pull everything down and out. Now it looks messy for the video. That's usually why I just keep everything, try to keep everything in here just so it looks a little bit neater. So you're, you have less for your eye to focus on. But right now, everything, here's another end that's trying to poke out. Everything is now woven in, you guys. All of my ends have now been woven in. Here is my short row heel. My ends have been woven in on this side. Let's have a look over here. Get my working yarn out of the way. And everything has been woven in on this side. Okay, and you're gonna just give a little extra tug if you want to, and you can feel, if you've been doing this for a little while, you can, you will start to be able to feel when it's too tight and you definitely don't want things to be tight but everything is now woven in this stitch is just a little enlarged and you know what that can happen sometimes let me see if i can show you on it's always on one side haha <laughs> yeah it's right here it's always on one side usually on if you're wearing the sock it would be on the left side of your sock okay there's always going to be one side where you have that slight potential for a slightly larger Stitch, it's just kind of the nature of how this works, but it is not a hole, okay? So now I am in position, just gonna find my working yarn. Again, these tails are just gonna keep poking until, <laughs> here's my working yarn. The tails are a little bit short, so they're just gonna keep trying to escape because they're still so close to the top, okay? So I just hold this closed, get my needle back into place, your short row heel is complete. And now you can continue, to, oh, these little escaping ends. And now you can just continue knitting your sock as you have been doing, okay? And then once you're finished, once again, we'll look at this one. Here's where we are. We just did the first round in this new color, in this sort of faded blue color. And you're just going to continue knitting your sock until you get down to your toe. And that is how you change color with a short row heel. There you go, my friends. And there you have it, you guys. That is how you change color. Sorry, I just bumped my camera. That is how you change color for your short row heel. Magic. <laughs> It feels a little fiddly the first time you do it because you've got a lot of ends and there's a lot of things going on. Once you've done it a few times, it will honestly, it just, you won't even have to think about it. It makes a really, really clean, you're weaving your ends in, you don't have to stop and do any of the sewing or weaving in at the end. If you weave it in as you go, it just makes for really tight, clean, tight meaning more like neat, meaning neat for neat, clean intersections and edges on that short row heel. I hope you found this helpful um, and useful. Thank you so very much for watching. It was so much fun recording this one for you. Um, I can now get these particular socks finished. Yay! <laughs> and uh, next up will be two at a time. Finally, it's coming y'all. Thank you so much for your patience with that one. Thank you so much for sticking with me today for this video. And um, I will see you all again very soon. If you have any questions at all, as always, please leave them in the um, comment section and under the description box down below. You can send me an email 
All of the con my contact information will be down below as well, and I will be more than happy to answer your questions for you. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.